morning. Word on Bitcoin this morning. It looks like that head and shoulders pattern that was being discussed is not happening because this was the head, of course, and then the second shoulder was going to come down to there. But it hasn't done that. And Bitcoin broke above. Okay, the first moving average it got above and was an interesting one. Um, of course, because when you've had a dip, you've got to get above these hourly moving averages. Look, when it scaled the 50, came back down to test it for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine hours. It's testing that 50 hour moving average. And a couple of times, look, even went below it and tested the 20, dot on the 20 moving average, 20 hour moving average. It scaled, it got above the 100 easily. I don't think that takes much makes much difference but look what happened when it got above the 200 got above it and then came back down to test it and has gone above now and i don't think looking at that pattern that it you know head and shoulders is it goes up there it goes you got a shoulder up with the head another shoulder breaks down an inverse head and shoulders of course breaks up Okay, but we this is um, invalidated, this head and shoulders pattern. Some people were looking at it like it was a wedge. Um, how are they drawing this? So it is in a channel in a way, isn't it? It could still be in a channel. And it could go up, touch the top, come back down. Um, but it's got above all the hourly moving averages now. And uh, the trend is trading up here. So it's clearly broken out of this bottom. It looks like a bit of a bottoming pattern, in all honesty. And yes, yeah, so a Bitcoin looks like it's going to head up and test the highs I would have thought because there's not much in the way in terms of any sort of resistance and now the the line of least resistance is to the upside now because it's scaled all of these averages the path of least resistance is to the up is up here there's least resistance upwards yeah, the path of least resistance, as an often used saying in trading, there's less resistance up here. Now, if we start coming down, there's lots of support. So the path of least resistance is to the upside now. Whereas before, we were underneath all of these averages here. We had to scale them all through them. We had to go through them. And look, when we got through them, we had to come back down and test them. So now Bitcoin basically has a clear run. Let's have a look at this on the daily chart with all your your standard indicators that you'd have on a daily chart because they're the most workable. So we've had a good green flag yesterday because the green flag yesterday, we come down for the 20 twice. Two days came down to test the 20, bounced off it. That's a clear sign of a, a pullback during an uptrend, a strong uptrend, um, just a basic pullback, because a bigger pullback, you're going down to the 50 moving average um, on a weekly chart, the 21 week, but we've just come down for the 20, touched on it twice, never closed anywhere near it really. You know, we've closed well above it and we opened yesterday well above it and closed way above it. and. You know, that average now doesn't come in. Let's have a look at some of these other indicators where we are with them because we may have nearly turned red. Yes, we did. We turned red in the MACD. But, so it'd be interesting to see because that's setting up negative now, um, but with the positive divergence because whereas this is getting bigger, um, this is getting, where this is getting lower, sorry, where it's going red, it's going to the negative side, this is going up. So that's a bit of a divergence. 
positive divergence. We crossed here, but it looks like we're probably going to cross again if this upward price action continues. Um, did anything happen much to the taken money flow? This is the distribution. This tells you whether you're really bullish or not. And I personally think it's a very good indicator for market sentiment. And when you lose the check in money flow, when this goes down, um, it's good. It's also a good indicator if, if even if you're in a bull market and you've you've hit a high. Now this came down very low in July 2019, while price was still quite high from the previous month where this take in money flow. Let's have a look to confirm that for you. Um, right. So we're back to 2019 here on the chart. So we had that big high. Um, I suppose it did come down quite a lot here and here you know here we're at 25 but the price was right up here at 13 so this had started a downtrend the shaking had started a clear downtrend which continued all the way into December um, as you can see look it's a clear downtrend in the shaking um, and this was a leading indicator coming into this coming into this look because we had very low price extremely low price where it was very negative and then suddenly in march after we'd been we were still low we were still hardly any better off than here the shake in money flow started to get really bullish before the breakout i mean look when the breakout happened this was at highs the shaking was at highs the day of the breakout so look we'd had all this time we'd had a whole three week period where this had been building momentum now this was a huge indicator at the time um so in future if we're on a low <coughs> and the shaking starts rising <coughs> without price rising that much that's a great indicator that there's something really happening in the markets that buys are being lined up selling pressures dried up and the day that this topped was the day that we went high and all of this buying here the shaking kept going down and then it sort of it sort of it went back up again here when we had this buying period um but yeah it, it, you can see it's a leading indicator there where the price hasn't changed and it's gone up. That's an interesting one for future reference. So let's go back to where we are today in the charts. We're so high above all of that action there where we were locked under 13 grand, under 14, just under 14 grand. I, my voice is gone today. Um, I'm doing a charity thing. Um, look, as you can see, Bain Tumor Charity, I want to start raising awareness and collecting. So if you're on my YouTube channel, um, I'll put a link up on my YouTube channel on the bio so you can make donations to the Brain Tumor Charity and the Action for Children. They do a wonderful, wonderful job. Right, so we've had Bitcoin. We can look at Bitcoin. We can look at lots of different... Um, indicators on bitcoin i just want to have a quick look at the relative strength index to see where we are with that let's get rid of that we see we come down and we are in bullish mode now we're not overbought so there's room there's room to move into that overbought of course that's probably what will happen we'll move into overbought again but for the moment that we'll have enough fuel to get to the highs here i would have thought um before we become overbought, uh, saying that that's moving as we're talking. Um, so we have a look at something else. We'll have a look at Ethereum US dollar because we, you know, that there is the the all time high in sight for Ethereum. Uh, the volumes dropped off a bit in Ethereum. Um, this is the hourly chart. So where did we get to with this? With the fibs, 
we're still below the golden ratio just although what about if it was body to body yeah yeah we're just below the golden ratio and how about the hourly indicators we're just at the moment testing the 200 um i think bitcoin's been outperforming slightly bit um ethereum we can have a look at that in a minute um bitcoin um, ethereum was on a huge uptrend on the daily chart and then we had a healthy correction and then yesterday look we bounced off we actually in ethereum we bounced off the 50. no is that the 20. oh yeah 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 the 20. no we didn't get anywhere near the 50 either so the 20 you may yeah, we bounced off that 20 moving average um in ethereum so we're still in a huge uptrend the volume ticked up high on the sell day but a lot of that would have been buying as well overall it was red because we came down but there would have been a lot of buying to make up that volume candle there um so we The take in money flow again is very very good in ethereum we had a downtrend actually where it's divergence but it's it's divergence on a on an indicator where divergence isn't as relevant um because look the price was rising here the price so from this high here the price was going up but this indicator here was going down so when when it built up here that was a bullish bullish sign for ethereum and we did have a huge breakout didn't we and this did build so this again was a leading indicator because this built before the breakout <clears throat> so it's a good idea to have your eye on the shaking money flow because look this was lows here on the 23rd of December, well, Ethereum was 638, 636. Um, and then it didn't rise that much to get to what, 730. But this was going on a steep uptrend. And look, it was a clear sign that look, the distribution is changing in favour of buying um, because look here wasn't a big sell off but we we got to this high here 21st of November and then we sort of we had a, a sideways period and this went down this lost a lot of strength so that could be a leading indicator um, Let's have a look, Eth, Bitcoin, see what's doing better. I had a feeling that Eth was going to begin to outperform Bitcoin. Um, gosh, that's a big daily candle, isn't it? But recently it hasn't really been. In this downtrend, it's, it's actually just doing a little bit worse. Yesterday we had a green day in both. But in F Bitcoin, it was a red day. Yeah, it's it's find a resistance at the 20. If you can get above the 20, then Ethereum could break out. But the path of least resistance is to the downside because there's nothing stopping it. This has got a lot of resistance here. So F Bitcoin you know, I'm expecting this to get to 0.5 at some stage. So it's obviously not happening now. Um, although it's picking up a little bit of a bid in the last couple of hours. After having a, a big sell off, actually. <coughs> so, no, a little bit of an inverse head and shoulders. Not a good one, though. Because look, there's one shoulder, there's the other one, and there's the head. No, sorry, that's a head and shoulders, a normal head and shoulders. 
So the levels to get above for Ethereum, there's going to be, there's going to be at this level here, 3463 three, Satoshis. Um, where does that look on a bigger picture chart? In terms of history for Ethereum Bitcoin. Well, no, it doesn't really coincide with that. Um, a big one will be this one getting above there getting above 0.4 that's the big one that it scaled in august when we had that great run on altcoins which began in march but this chart we began that that actually began on this day here so overall ethereum did outperform bitcoin throughout that period and we had some DeFi projects that were originally built on Ethereum do very, very well indeed during that run up. Um, I expect Ethereum to get to get above this. You know, I can't see it's in a downtrend on the three day chart here. It looks like it's been supported by the 20. The 50 is the it's the 150 day. So we'll see if that acts as support. Um, it clearly used the the two hundred is that the two hundred? Yeah, it clearly used the two hundred here a support at the end of December. Bounced off of that strongly. Uh, another one I was gonna look at. How's sushi getting along? I, I invested in sushi last week. Sushi Bitcoin outperforming Bitcoin, doing really well. Has to get above this level here. If you can get above this level here, 1401 Satoshis, it's looking good, looking good. It's a great pattern, that little rounded pattern there. It looks good, looking good, Sushi, um, on the daily chart. Um, I also in, in, invested in another one called Injective Protocol. There's a new one for you. Um, um, Binance and look it's outperforming Bitcoin fantastically well for one two three this is phenomenal um, outperforming Bitcoin it will have to get above 22,000 Satoshis but it's looking good it's well above the 20 moving average it used the 50 for support there um, but yeah new crypto injective protocol keep your eyes open for it um, So we go from low, we go from high to low on the old fib. See where we are with it. We've come up, we've touched the golden. We've touched the golden ratio. And then we were pushed back down. But then we bounced again and we got up to the 50. And it looks like it's in an uptrend in this cryptocurrency inch against Bitcoin. Yeah, it's bouncing around that, that region now. Um, Wi-Fi is another interesting one I've been into lately. I actually um, think that it's best to be, you know, spread in the market. So that's Wi-Fi US dollar. It's above the key moving average. That's on the four-hour chart. Let's get it on the hourly. See how it's getting on. It's above the two key ones here, US dollar, Wi-Fi. Now, where does that look in terms of longer term? Wi-Fi. I know we had highs. We had real big highs <coughs> back in that August period, where we got to. When was that? That was September, actually. Where we got to forty-three nine nine six, and we've just been up. And we've got to forty. It's volatile. It's a volatile one. Um, looks. Looks like a good bottom there. We formed there and we've gone on an uptrend. How's it doing for Bitcoin? 